Okay, let's start on Friday and let's go to the AAC. We got a big one. This is at noon on ABC. Tulane at Cincy. Cincy is a two point home favorite over under 46 and a half. The winner of this game will host the AAC championship game. The loser still has a shot. If but it all depends on what UCF does. Houston's even still alive, um, which would take some absolute chaos. But if UCF, UCF's going to beat USF. I mean, maybe they won't, but they should. And if that happens, it'll just come down to who's ranked higher, UCF or – I'm sorry, if Houston wins as well. So let me let me start this over. The winner of this game is going to host the AAC Championship – the loser could potentially go into a tiebreaker with UCF and also maybe Houston. If it's a three-way tiebreaker, it would go to who's the highest rated team in the college football playoff rankings, which would probably be UCF if they win and the loser of this would drop below them. However, if UCF loses and Houston loses, then these two teams are just going to play again, no matter what. So, uh, but most likely you're looking at the winner of this game hosting UCF, I would imagine. But that's either neither here nor there. Let's talk about this game. Uh, I I wish I could have I could get a three here, but I really like Tulane. Uh, I mean, I've been low on this, and, and same with you on the Cincinnati team <clears throat> all season long. And if you look at their body of work, just look at some of just look at their results. Just take you know very basic analysis. Take their schedules. And look at who's just won comprehensively week in and week out. And then look at the other team, which is Cincinnati, who is barely, barely scraping by a number of opponents, home and away. Also, from a matchup perspective, we talked about Tulane's excellent secondary all season. Since he can't run the ball, the bottom 10 rush success rate, that's not going to get it done against Tulane. I've said this since he's, this since he defense has been overrated all year because of all, you know, all the talent that they lost. It's very rare for a team in the AAC. I think Tulane gets this done. I'm going to wait to see if this gets up to three. If it doesn't, I'll still be on them. Probably be in my round robin as well. I think Tulane gets it done. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, I think Tulane's going to be the one that hosts the AAC championship. Uh, I mean, our conclusion from the UCF game uh, with Tulane is that you know Tulane can't defend the run, but they're still an excellent against the pass. And they're currently fifth in coverage grading. So that didn't work out against Central Florida. But Cincinnati is 53% pass plays for Ben Bryant. Ben Bryant, not the best quarterback uh in, in the conference, but they're not really run. He's not like a he's not like a plumley that's gonna he plumley ran for a 180 against yeah. uh Tulane. That was their issue. Yeah, and, and the rush offense for Cincinnati is 118th in success rate. So they cannot attack Tulane where Tulane is the weakest on defense. Ben Bryant has pulled explosives in the passing games and standard downs, but Tulane dominates that down and distance and they dominate in pass explosiveness. So, you know, Cincinnati's weakness on defense, turn to the other side, Cincinnati's weakness on defense is against the pass. So Michael Pratt just completed nine passes against SMU with three touchdowns. That's like the most efficient box score I've ever seen in my life. Uh, It's a big penalty difference here. Tulane's eighth in the nation in flags. Cincinnati's 125th. To me, the number is depressed at two. I think it should be a little bit higher, but at this point I would bet the money line. I think Tulane wins this game outright. 